we'll start with the histology of gallbladder. So after gallbladder, we'll complete with the histology of pancreas. So Gallbladder, it is a fibromuscular blind sac which is found in the uh, gallbladder fossa on the visceral surface of the liver. So, gallbladder, the length of the gallbladder it is uh, about 10 cm and the width is 3 to 4 cm and the capacity of the gallbladder is 50 to 80 ml. So, before coming to histology, I will just tell you about the growth. So when we cut open the gallbladder, we find any honeycomb appearance in the gallbladder. So when you cut open the gallbladder, we find many honeycomb appearance within the in the mucosa of the gallbladder. So why this honeycomb appearance comes? That is because there is the mucosa, this gallbladder, the mucosal surface, the mucosa of the gallbladder, they anastomose with each other. So due to this anastomosis, we get to see the honeycomb appearance of the gallbladder. So like other organs of the GI tract, here also from lumen to outside, if we go, the gallbladder it consists of the mucosa and the lining epithelium, the mucosa consists of only two layers, that is the epithelial lining and the lamina propria. The muscular is interna, is absent. So mucosa, of the gallbladder consists of lining epithelium and lamina propria. Lining epithelium and lamina propria. In the lining epithelium, we find three types of cells. That is the tall columnar cells, as we all see, the tall columnar cells, the pencil cells, and the stem cells. So these three types of cells are found in the lining epithelium of the gallbladder. And we find the lamina propria. Here the muscularis mucosa is absent. The muscularis mucosa or muscularis interna. Muscularis interna is absent. This we should remember. The muscularis interna is absent in the gallbladder. Along with this, the submucosa of the gallbladder is also absent. The submucosa of the gallbladder is also absent. Absent. Submucosa is also absent. And coming to the next layer, here we don't find muscularis externa. It is uh, typically in the according to the general plan of the GI tract, as we find. The muscularis externa consists of inner circular and outer longitudinal, but here the situation is different. Here we find instead of uh, inner circular and outer longitudinal, we find only the fibromuscular layer in which we find bundles of smooth muscles. Fibromuscular layer. Fibromuscular. layer in which we find bundles of smooth muscles and some elastic fibers. So in place of muscularis externa, we find fibromuscular layer because the, uh, uh, the function of gallbladder is to only store and concentrate bile. So it needs to store and concentrate, no need of churning anything. So it doesn't need any muscular structure, only fibromuscular layer that which consists of only smooth muscle bundles, bundles of smooth muscles and elastic fibers. So here 
here you will find that in the fibromuscular layer we find bundles of smooth muscles and some elastic fibers and similarly the uh, it is covered by serosa the fundic part here the gallbladder what the parts of the gallbladder it is the parts of the gallbladder fundus the fundic part is uh, fully covered with the peritoneum that is the serous covering and this part it lies in the gallbladder fossa so here we find the adventitia and rest all it is covered with serosa uh, and here in the cystic duct what we find we find the valve of semilunar valve of pistil within the cystic duct we find valve of these are semi lunar in shape and that is called valve of h e i s t e r which is found only in human beings and primates so this valve of is there it is only found in human beings so here what we see the hepatic the right and the left hepatic duct the right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct they will form common hepatic duct common hepatic duct then after the cystic duct merges with it it forms the common bile duct then we know that this common bile duct the duodenum we find one important organ that is the pancreas the pancreas lies within the c shaped concavity of the duodenum lies the pancreas so now we will continue with the start with the histology of pancreas so to summarize the histology of gall bladder i would like to tell to summarize the histology of gall bladder so from mucosa outside the mucosa uh, the gall bladder it consists of mucosal folds highly anastomotic mucosal folds uh, so for gall bladder this is the histology of gall bladder from inside out if you go these mucosal folds they are, they are highly anastomotic with each other which gives honeycomb appearance in gross then in the mucosa we have the lining epithelium made up of three cells that is the tall columnar cells the pencil cells and the stem cells then comes a lamina propria here muscular is interna is absent then the submucosa is also absent and in case of muscular is externa that is in a circular and outer longitudinal here in the gall bladder we have a fibro muscular layer which is made up of mainly the smooth muscle bundles and elastic fibers and on the outside it is covered by serosa so now we come to the histology of pancreas so this pancreas is in an, um, both an exocrine and an endocrine organ which is 15 cm long 3 to 4 cm width and it lies within the concavity of the four parts of the duodenum this is the first part second part third part and fourth part so within the concavity of the duodenum the pancreas lies and what are the parts of the duodenum the pancreas here that it is the head head of the pancreas then it has a neck so below the neck we find the formation of the portal vein just behind the neck we find the formation of portal vein so this is the neck and here also we find the superior mesenteric artery 
So behind the neck we find two important structures. Behind the neck of the pancreas, that is the formation of portal vein and epidermis This pancreas, it also has an uncinate process. Just below the head is an uncinate process. So uncinate process, head, neck, this is the body and this is the tail. So the tail is of the pancreas, this is in contact with hilum of the spleen. So spleen is there. So it is in contact with the hilum of the spleen. So this pancreas, it is both an exocrine and endocrine organ. The exocrine part of the pancreas, it is mainly formed by compound tubulo SNR or tubulo alveolar cells and uh, which comprises almost 98% of the parenchyma of the pancreas. So pancreas, since it is a mixed gland, it is made up of the three components that is the parenchymal part which is mainly made up of serous acetylene which is tubulo acetylene, compound tubular acetylene type. Then the ductal part, here we find, um, we will come to that, the ductal part and the stromal part. It is covered with a capsule which is septa and it divides it into lobes and lobules. Here there is some special about the ductal part. Here this uh, pancreas, we usually confuse the pancreas with the, the histology of pancreas is mainly confused with that of the parotid. So, what is the difference between the histology of pancreas and histology of parotid? We will we'll go on describing it. So, here the ductal part of pancreas, we find the main pancreatic duct and this pattern of ductal system is called herring bone pattern. H-E-R-R-I-N-G, herring bone pattern. So, and here there is another accessory duct. So, this main pancreatic duct is called the duct of Wilson and the accessory pancreatic duct is called the duct of Santorini. So, the main pancreatic duct, it opens into the second part of the duodenum at the major duodenal papillae. And the accessory pancreatic duct, it opens just 1.5 cm above this, the minor duodenal duct. And this uh, common bile duct, it opens into the pancreatic duct. So before opening, the common bile duct is encircled by a sphincter, that is called sphincter polydocus. And the pancreatic duct is sir, encircled by another sphincter that is called sphincter pancreaticus. So sphincter colodocus and sphincter pancreaticus both and here the third part that is the sphincter ampullae. There is an ampulla of water here. So the sphincter colodocus, sphincter colodocus, sphincter pancreaticus whole overall it is encircled by sphincter ampulla. Here there is ampulla of sphincter. So this whole thing, this three components, the sphincter colodocus, sphincter pancreaticus and sphincter ampulla, these three are called sphincter of OD. Sphincter of O these three components, the sphincter colodocus, sphincter pancreaticus and sphincter ampullae, these three will form the sphincter of OD. So the sphincter, the ampulla of water, it opens here into the second part of the opening. So above this opening, it is called the foregut, below this the midgut starts. And the um, pattern of duct system, we call it as herring bone pattern. And here what happens? usually confuse the slide of the pancreas with that of the parotid because in parotid also we find the serous acinate and here also we find the serous acinate but here we find one, uh, one thing that is the centric acinar cells what are centro acinar cells here also we find the serous acinate but the differentiating features and here at places we find the endocrine part 
that is the eyelids of Lagrange, which are pale masses we find throughout the slide. These are the eyelids of Lagrange. And in the slide of the pancreas, we don't find myepithelial cells, which was uh, which was found in the um, serous acini of the paraffin. And here, what do we find? What are centroacin cells, which we don't find in the paraffin? So here, each acini is formed by each acini is formed by pyramidal cells. So this is one acinus. It is formed by pyramidal cells. This is the base of each pyramidal cell. Towards the apex, we find the granules, eosinophilic granules towards the apex. So we find this apical eosinophilia and the nucleus, rounded nucleus, we find in the center. So this is like that of the parotid, we find apical eosinophilia and basal basophilia. And just below the um, nucleus, we find some rough endoplasmic reticulum, which gives basophilic scale. So, apical eosinophilia, basal basophilia, we find in each of the pyramidal cells. So, this whole thing we call it as serous acini. And each acini is made up of many pyramidal cells, which have apical eosinophilia and basal basophilia. And here, the duct, the smallest duct which enters this is the speciality which we have here. It enters into the acinus. This the intercalated duct. This is the intercalated duct which has entered into the acinus. But there in parotid it did not, it was draining the acinus. But here it has entered into the acinus, the intercalated duct, the smallest of the smallest duct, that is the intercalated duct. And here it is lined by low cuboidal cells. So, the, when in a cut section, this acini gives the central nucleus. That is called centroacinar cells. Centroacinar cells. So, which is the um, characteristic feature of pancreas, which you don't find in parotid. And uh, here also, in parotid, we found the, the smallest duct was intercalated duct. Then it was striated duct, then it was intralobular, interlobular, like that it goes on. But here striated duct is also absent. So these are the differences. How will you differentiate? How we differentiate the slide of parotid from pancreas? First we find islets of Langerhans in pancreas and parotid. How we differentiate these two slides? Islet of Langerhans, which you don't find in Peru. Then the second thing is centroacinar cells. Centroacinar cells, which are nothing but these are the uh, cuboidal cells, simple cuboidal cells or no cuboidal cells, pale staining found inside the acini serous acini of the pancreas, centroacinar cells, which we found here. And here in parotid, we found myoepithelial cells, myoepithelial cells, which is absent here. And the striated ducts, which we found here, striated ducts, just after, it is thicker than that of the intercalated duct, striated duct is also absent here. So, striated duct and myoepithelial cells are absent in pancreas, whereas we find islets of Langerhans and centroacinar cells in pancreas. Now, now, we come to the endocrine part of the pancreas. So, endocrine part of the pancreas, it, it is made up of islets of Langerhans. So these cells, the islets of Langerhans, these are pale staining masses, 
they don't take up stain in HAD and these islets of Langerhans they are endocrine structures within the pancreas and they comprise only of 2% of the population of the cells. Majority 98% of the cell is uh, of the pancreas, pancreas of the pancreas is made up of tubular, uh, this is serous acinine, it is compound tubular acinine and here in uh, endocrine part of the pancreas we find peripherally situated that is alpha cells. These alpha cells we find in the peripheral part of the islet of Langerhans. This is islet of Langerhans. And we also find some delta cells in the periphery. But so the peripheral part is heterogeneous. But in the center we find beta cells. In the center, we find beta cells. So, beta cells uh, in the islet of Langerhans, the beta cell comprises about 60 to 70 percent of the population of the islet cells. But uh, the peripheral part, in the peripheral part, the alpha cells it comprises of 10 to 15 percent and delta cell 1 to 2 percent. In uh, besides this, we have an, uh, some more cells that is the PP cells the epsilon cells which release ghrelin, the beta cell release insulin, the delta cells and the alpha cells they release glucagon and the delta cells they release somatostatin and gastrin. The somatostatin it inhibits the secretion of the beta cells and uh, the so somatostatin also inhibits the secretion of alpha cells. The alpha cells secrete glucagon and the beta cells they secrete insulin. So, and uh, some epsilon cells are there, they also secrete the uh, ghrelin which uh, induces hunger. And these, these uh, islets of Langerhans, they are richly supplied with fenestrated sinusoidal capillary. So, when we make a diagram of this, we should make some sinusoidal capillary and uh, these uh, beta cells, alpha cells and delta cells when they are stained with malary agent stain and uh, this beta cells, the, uh, the alpha cells they take up, they stain with acid pustin, beta cells they um, uh, stain with aldehyde pustin. So uh, and it uh, gives brownish orange color, the alpha cells, the delta cells they look blue in melody cells. So, this is about and uh, the pancreas, in the pancreas, the main function of pancreas is to uh, digest the carbohydrate, the protein and the fat. The, so, it releases the, the main function of centroacinar cell is to release bicarbonate ions. Large number of bicarbonate ions are released in from the centroacinar cells and they, uh, the pancreatic MLS and water also, water is also released in large amount. So this is all about the histology of pancreas. Thank you.